Good evening and welcome to PACE IT's webinar, this evening's webinar. Tonight we will be talking about CompTIA's Network Plus exam N10-005 and specifically we're going to be talking about Objective 2.6. I'm Brian Farrell and I am the Certificate Mentor and Instructor for the PACE IT course titled uh, Technology and Integration Support, which just also happens to be uh, CIS 205 at Edmonds Community College. So what is exam objective 2.6 of the N10-005 exam? Well, it's planning and implementing a basic small office home office network. Now I'm not going to get too much into the implementation. I actually focus more on the plan. Uh, that tends to be a little bit more critical than actually doing the installation. So that's where we start. So of course since I just mentioned that I focus a little bit more on a plan, well, let's talk about the importance of a plan. So if you need a simple small office, home office, you know, they're pretty easy to implement. You know, you can just plug two PCs into a switch or a hub and guess what? There you have it, your basic or the most basic of small office, home office networks. As a matter of fact, you don't even need the switch or the hub if you use a crossover cable. That way you can actually connect two PCs together and you have your basic network. But the question that I have for you is if you have that basic of, a, basic of a network, would it actually achieve what you want? Maybe, maybe not. You wouldn't know unless you had a plan. Uh, a network plan can be vital when you're implementing any network that is even just a little bit more complicated than the most basic and simple of networks. Why is that? Well, that's because you don't want to end up with this when you are actually shooting for this. That, that just doesn't work. So your plan should cover what you're hoping to achieve and how you're going to get there. Uh, you're going to need not only your own expertise, but you might also need input from your end users if you're designing the network for somebody else. You know, there's nothing quite so frustrating as delivering a network that you've designed and then having your customer tell you that's not what they wanted. Worse yet, having them tell you that you need to do it over and you won't get paid until it is, until it meets their specifications. So now let's talk about some plan considerations that you need to consider when you're designing your network. So first up is you need a list of requirements. So you need to define why the network is needed. If the network is just needed to be able to share files within an office, that's pretty simple. But if you need to actually share files, but you need to keep some computers from accessing those files while others need access to them, so on and so forth, you need to document that so you can figure out what you need. <clears throat> and that, once you define why you need the network, that will help you define what features are going to be required. So once you figure out why the web network is needed and what features are required, then you need to define the scope of the network. How much of the equipment are you going to supply? How much of the infrastructure build out are you going to implement or are you going to subcontract it out or is the client going to subcontract it out? And the other thing to go over carefully with your client is a budget. Always establish a budget when you're implementing a network. That really helps to reduce surprises. One moment, please. So 
sorry about that. The next step is to actually get down and do the design. So you're going to need to figure out what equipment is going to be needed to implement that network. Uh, you should specify it down as, as far down as you can, up to and including model numbers whenever possible. Then you need to figure out how that network's going to be organized. You need to figure out where the equipment's going to be placed. You know, where are the servers going to be kept? Where are the switches going to be placed? Where are the routers? So on and so forth. And then how or what shared resources are going to be placed on the network? I just mentioned servers. Are you also going to have a network printer? The last thing that you need to consider are compatibility issues, especially if you're implementing wireless. You need to make sure that all of your equipment's going to play well well together, or we're going to go back to that frustration situation before. Okay. Once you've got that done, now you need to figure out your internal connections. So how many nodes are going to be connected to the network? Are your, is your building pre-wired, or are you going to have to do the runs yourself? How many connection points are you going to put in each office? Uh, one of the last network designs that I did uh, was actually during the build-out phase of a brand new building, and I actually put network jacks in every wall of every office. Originally, the customer was questioning the need for that. They, they thought that they had their plans out specifically, and they wanted just network jacks where they felt that they were going to be used. They actually thanked me once they moved into their building and found out that their uh, office furniture plan didn't meet their expectations, and they actually ended up using some of those extra wall jacks that I put installed because where their office furniture didn't go where they thought it was going to go. You also need to consider future expansion whenever possible. I'll also put a note there is, will there be wireless in this network? If so, how are you going to get the best coverage with the least leakage? Where are you going to be able to put that wireless access point so it's central to the coverage area and doesn't blast that signal where you don't want it to go? So another thing that you need to consider, oops, sorry, didn't mean to do that are external connections. How will your small office, home office, connect to the outside world? Are you going to be using DSL? Is your customer actually going to use a T1 line or a cable modem? These things need to be considered because it will have an impact on your design and where you place equipment. Talking about network equipment placement. Is there a wiring slash equipment closet where you can place the majority of your networking gear? Uh, can or should the networking equipment be secured? And my answer to that is yes, it should. Whenever possible, secure your network gear or your client's network gear. Anybody who has access to that gear actually takes away uh, actually makes it so it's no longer their network. Whoever has access to that gear actually controls that network. Uh, and finally, you know, there are environmental considerations. You really don't want to put your networking gear in a boiler room. That's too hot. You need to consider these things when you're placing your equipment. Okay, so how will your network security be implemented? Uh, where are you going to put firewalls? Are you going to have a DMZ? If you have a DMZ, then you should have more than one firewall. How about VLANs? Remember earlier when I talked about you wanted to share uh, some files and some data? 
on the network, but you didn't want to share it with all of the machines, VLANs come in handy in network designs where you want that added security or that added granular control. You need to think about these things when you're planning your network. And finally, will you implement port security on your switches? I highly recommend it because any port switch that somebody can plug into that doesn't have port security enabled so that they can gain access to, to the network, guess what? It's now their network, not your network. How are you going to document your network? Things that you need to document are where cable cables run and where they plug into on ports. You need to document where, equi where equipment is kept. And you also need to document the logical and physical design of the network. Some final considerations, once your client or you have got everything up and running, you should document on which ports their equipment is installed and which ports are not being used. That's a good plan. It helps for when there's a problem and you show up and things don't match the map. It'll help you to get things correct. So. The network that you design and that you implement may not be exactly what you planned, so you need to document your changes. Why is that? Well, because even small changes can have a major impact on troubleshooting the network. There's not a whole lot of difference between the network that I'm showing right here and the one that was planned except for the addition of a wireless router that is connected straight to the internet and that's your guest wireless network access. That's a small change but it can have a major impact on the network. Always document changes. Also always have your client sign off on the changes that you implement. That will save you in the long run. Now, like I said, I didn't talk too much about implementing the equipment. Most of that's covered in other webinars, but as you can tell from the material, it is important to always plan your networks, even if it's just a simple small office, home office. Now, on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this webinar, and I hope that you will attend again.